As many of you are aware, Hillary Clinton has recently made her pick of her vice president of choice. And guess whom she picks? She picks a Jesuit, a Jesuit by the name Tim Kaine. Senator Tim Kaine is a well-known Jesuit missionary. Here's what you need to know about the Jesuits. The Jesuits are high above all other movements. Jesuits are above the Masons. Jesuits are above the Illuminati. These are simply different wings. These are just different secret societies underneath the wings of the Jesuit order. The Jesuits are pretty much the ones who run the world. And through the process of using other different secret orders and secret societies, they are able to then gain control of many different aspects of life. They run in high places. Pope Francis, his soldiers, his policemen are the Jesuits. In order for one to become a recognized Jesuit, one must take an oath. And that oath requires one to swear an allegiance for the rest of his life dedicated to the service of the Pope and the papacy. Their loyalty lies to the Pope. So it doesn't matter if Tim Kaine says that he is the vice president for Hillary Clinton, he accepts that responsibility, yes. However, his primary loyalty and allegiance belongs to the papacy. And this is not by accident. Tim Kaine did not get picked just by random chance. No, this is all a part of the plan. He had to get picked. And now in fact that we see a Jesuit being picked for vice presidency, this should not be a surprise to let all of you know that it's only a matter of time before we witness a state religion declared and a national Sunday law be declared nationwide. We are getting closer and closer to that hour when we are going to witness this. Today I can guarantee today I can guarantee you Many of you are looking at me as a laughing stock or anyone who mentions to you that a state religion, a nationwide Sunday law will be declared. You're going to laugh at people like us for saying these kinds of stuff to you. However, when that time comes and a state religion, national Sunday law is declared, the head authority of it being the papacy, when you witness that, do not cry and say you were not forewarned or that you were not told of this event. Because just as it happened in ancient days when King Nebuchadnezzar erected that golden image, that golden idol and declared that people should bow down and worship that golden image. Before that image was made, I am 100% positive there must have been a rumor and people might have known that something like this was going to be declared and many were warned. And they probably said, it will never happen. And if it does happen, I will never ever bow down and worship this golden image. My loyalty will, will always be to God Almighty. However, when that time came and the golden image was made and the trumpets sounded, the people saw the fiery furnace and they saw the golden image. They bowed down and worshipped this golden image and they followed the rest of the crowd. Only three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they refused to bow down. Do not be surprised when that day comes and a national Sunday law is declared. The reason I'm putting a heavy emphasis on a national Sunday law is because that is what the main intention of the Jesuits are. That is the main intention of the Pope. The Pope is trying to gather all the religions together to come as one under one roof, but they are going to be under the umbrella of the papacy, which means if they are going to be under the umbrella of the papacy, guess who will be at the head of it? It's going to be the Pope. And keep in mind that the Jesuit oath is much more dangerous than you might think. It's not just any type of an ordinary oath you just take, oh, I swear my allegiance to for the service of the papacy and blah blah blah. No, their oath goes much more deeper and much more darker and much more sinister because they are willing to do whatever they can to force people to obey the voice of the papacy. If you refuse to comply, if you refuse to be with them, you will be slaughtered and killed in the most brutal fashion. Go and research the Jesuit oath and read it for yourselves.
you, I can guarantee you that you are going to find something much more sinister that's going to hopefully wake you up. And this is who Hillary Clinton picks to be her running mate, her vice president. It is no surprise actually because you know what, when you think about it, she is a supporter of the devil worshipping people, like people who are devil worshippers. She herself is a devil worshipper. These people are all devil worshippers. Her face is also on the Illuminati card. She is the one that is pretty much controlling Bill Clinton. And you can clearly see that in the Illuminati cards because her hand is grabbing the rope which is tied to Bill Clinton's neck. Two different cards, one game the Illuminati. And if you think that this is where things end, it's actually not because the interesting thing is also Joe Biden is a Jesuit himself. So is it by chance? <laughs> it's not. It's not by coincidence. It's all staged. It's all meant to be. These presidents have to have some type of a connection with the Vatican and they do. The majority of the population of the United States of America is now being governed by Catholics. The Roman Catholic Church has pretty much influenced every place around the world. It is both a religio and political power. This same power, the papacy, is the little horn in the book of Daniel chapter 7. Because in the book of Daniel 7, we see that there are four beasts which come upon the earth. And these beasts represent kingdoms, four kingdoms. The fourth kingdom, the dreadful and terrible beast, is the kingdom of Rome, pagan Rome. This beast had 10 horns. Horns represent kings, kings with their own dominion. Further simplifying it, these kings are a part of this beast. They are a part of Rome. And the Bible goes on to describe that another small horn, a little horn begins to come up from their midst. And this little horn then uproots three other horns. It plucks out three other horns. In other words, this little horn that came up it was so powerful that it got rid of three horns. Once a horn is removed from an animal, that horn is not going to grow back up again. And guess what? These three horns represent the kingdoms of the Vandals, Ostrogoths, and the Herulis. They have been wiped out completely from the face of the earth by the Vatican. The papacy did this. It's all fulfilled. This same organization of the Antichrist is the very one that is recognized also in Revelation 17 as Mystery Babylon. The woman who rides the dreadful beast, the church who rides on that same dreadful beast known as Rome. That woman represents the Catholic Church who is drunk with the blood of the saints. She persecuted God's children throughout the dark ages, 1260 literal years. Now, here we are in 2016, this very same church, after it received its authority back in 1929 when Mussolini granted authority back to the papacy to act both as a political and a religious power, this same power is now influencing the decision making of the United States of America. This is not by chance. What you are seeing, Hillary Clinton is simply playing the game according to how she is supposed to do it. This is all staged. Everything is staged. Once you understand that everything is rigged and staged, everything becomes much more clear to you. Ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure this out. It's right in plain sight. It's in plain sight. It is in plain sight. How basic... This is... It's, it's in plain sight right in front of you. You can see it. In order for you to see it, you cannot be distracted. Do not allow yourself to be distracted by all other distractions. The media is controlled. They will not allow anyone to run for presidency unless they have the blessings of the Brotherhood of the Masons. If you don't have that, don't even think that you will make it to the very top to be able to run for presidency. It's all staged. If you think that Donald Trump is the savior of the of the world or if he, if you think he is the savior of the American people think again. Obama promised to be the savior of America when he came and he said the time for change has come many people followed him. How different is this going to be? You think that one of these candidates are actually going to save you? Now, interestingly enough, I read something a commentary that came on my timeline in which someone else I don't even know who said it, but they said that the Republican Party is the only party that will complain and say 
that the government is not actually taking care of the people or the government is failing the people and when they get elected they prove that point <laughs> but hey we'll continue this journey on another video thank you for tuning in and for joining me ladies and gentlemen this is the controversy 7 if you are new to this channel be sure to subscribe there's a lot of information coming across your way that's going to blow your mind away other than that i'm not going to hold you off Feel free to join me on Facebook, link is in the description box. Feel free to go on my website www.thecontroversy7.ca Other than that, kids, don't do drugs. You take care of yourselves, be safe, and I'll see you next time.